Hey guys, Jesse here from Urban Legends Antiques and this week we are doing a collab with Moxie DIY and Java. If you haven't heard, Bridgerton is coming out today Ooh. and we're doing a light academia aesthetic to kind of go with it. So let's get started. I got a phone call from my trusty friend Norco Mary and she had found this beautiful dresser on the side of the road. It was going to be thrown away and she told me that trash day was the next day so I needed to hurry up and get out there and pick this dresser up. This is Cancun Blue by Chalky Chicks. You've seen me paint with it before and it looks like a robin's egg blue. I'm using the Stalmista round brush and I'm only going about halfway in. If you dunk all the way in, that brush will hold a lot of paint. So make sure if you're using the Stalmista brand that you only go halfway to a quarter way in and that will be more than enough paint on your brush to paint with. I do intend to wax this piece, so I'm going over with my first coat and then later on I will cover up with a second coat, but I really like the Chalky Chicks paint because you get good coverage with one coat. Because this piece has all of those beautiful carved details in it that I love, I don't want to put too much paint on and then get a bunch of drips and all of those little curved edges, so I'm just going carefully. I'm getting ready to paint the handles. This right here is the handle for the drawer and it's really cool how it looks like that but I was worried that I was going to put too much paint inside and then it wouldn't dry or the paint would drip out. So I was just trying to be really careful and kind of aware of what I'm doing. These are the handles for the top three dresser drawers and I like them. I decided I wanted to paint over them though just to give like a matching look to the whole thing and I really like that I did this because it tied together the whole piece beautifully. You can find me on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok at Urban Legends Antiques. In addition to all the carved wood details, there's a lot of curves and angles to this dresser because it is a Bombay style dresser. So I'm just going along getting everything painted up in preparation for the finish. The other part of the challenge is to do a light academia aesthetic and I am doing light academia but with a tropical five because I live in the desert. The tablecloth and placemats both came from Walmart. I really like the placemats because they're reversible. I got them for 50 cents each a couple years ago and they're really fun. My runner will consist of fake palm leaves and packing material. I use packing material like this a lot in shows because I can stage with it and it gives a little bit of height and dimension without being too heavy. This placemat is from my personal collection and I use it when I'm serving warm dishes to my family. I just put it on the table to protect the wood. I have a silver plated serving tray with a pedestal on it and I've added in my first Light Academia Bridgerton figurine. I'm adding in a tea set that was Chuck's mother's and my milk glass vase with tropical flowers in it. This cutting board is also from our personal collection. Chuck uses it when he's making tortillas because he can roll it out easily. And there is my second little Bridgerton figurine. I'm adding in another milk glass vase with a tropical arrangement inside just for fun. And now I'm gonna make some coffee. I confess, I'm a coffee addict. I love coffee. I drink it every morning. And my preferred way of making coffee is with a French press. Now let's get back to my dresser. I don't know how long this dresser had been outside before I picked it up, but there is a lot of damage to the top of it. So I'm using a very light hand to sand with and the finish is coming off in big, huge chunks. I'm worried when I paint that the, the flakes, this chippy finish, is gonna get into my paint and contaminate it. So I think I'm gonna have to pull out my rotary sander and do some major sanding. Usually I try to avoid doing that as much as possible because I don't wanna like sand through a veneer, but this piece is old and it's all wood. So I don't have to worry about hitting an MDF underneath. So I'm pulling out the sander. I had tried to take this piece outside so I could sand outside, but it is way too heavy. So I said, forget it, I'm sanding inside. I have all the attachments to hook my rotary sander up to a shop vac, but I lost one somewhere. So I need to figure out another way to be able to sand inside without the dust going everywhere. So I'm going to use my shark. 
I love my shark vacuum and they always say that the shark never loses suction. So we're gonna put that to the test. I'm using the basic wand with the flex hose attachment that comes with your vacuum and I just put it on the end of the sander. It doesn't fit perfectly, so I put some saran wrap around it just to help seal it off. And we're gonna try it out. The vacuum is on, my orbital sander is on, and it looks like it's working pretty good. I would not recommend anyone else doing it this way. This is just what's working for me and it's working well. Is it a little bit redneck? Yes. Is it ingenious? Yes. Is it getting the job done? Oh yes. Now that I have the top sanded and ready for paint, I'm just going through and touching up any of the places that I missed when I was first painting my dresser. I'm painting the top of the dresser in Normandy by Chalky Chicks. It's a light blue gray color that I really like and I think it matches well with the base. I have the first layer of paint down and I am going to use a Jamie Ray vintage stencil. This one was designed by Vintage Retail Therapy by Mara and it's her playful background stencil. For my second layer, the paint color I'm using is Starless Night by Chalky Chicks. It's their blackest black and I'm doing a swirling technique. I'm using the playful background stencil and I'm only using one half of it. You can either do the honeycomb side or the crackle side and I've chosen the crackle side. I know I just sanded off a bunch of chipping, crackling finish from the top, but I just didn't want it to flake up and, and be rough and bubbly. So that's why I chose to do the stencil instead now that it's all sanded down. And I really like the way it's looking. I'm going to continue to stencil. I'm going to just use it at different angles and edges, however I think it will look so you don't see a repeating pattern. Love it. My final layer will be a dry brush technique. I'm using a combination of gray and white and I dab into the paint, wipe off the excess and then brush back and forth quickly between gray and white. I will then spray the whole thing down with water and then do a final brush back and forth just to smooth and blend all of the colors together. I finished my piece and now I'm just waxing it to seal it in. You can see the variation of the color. You can see the gray and the white where it's blended in. You can see a little bit of the crackle shining through and this is the exact look that I wanted. Now I'm gonna finish waxing the rest of my dresser to get a good top coat down and let it seal and cure before I take it into my shop. Here is my piece all done. It has blues and grays. It has a little bit of the crackle, the aged look. I think the light academia aesthetic was the perfect choice for this dresser. I love how it looks. It's fresh, clean, ready for spring and ready to head into my shop. Let's finish up my tablescape. I'm adding in some chargers that I got from Hobby Lobby, the ones that you can find for $1.99 a piece and some sourdough bread that I baked myself. And I have a couple of these cute little cast iron birds in differing colors that I'm going to just kind of sprinkle throughout the tablescape. I have my hand poured small batch soy candles. This scent is, uh, I think it's sandalwood. A little bit of fresh butter to go with my homemade bread. I'm curious, what would you put out for a tea table? This is some marmalade that came from one of our neighbors. I'm bringing my French press out and I'm going to put it in a place of honor right here. And because Bridgerton is a series of books, I'm going to add some books into my tablescape. Each place setting will have their own special book. My sister is in England right now on holiday, so because she can't be here with me, I'm putting some reading glasses out just to honor her. I'm adding in some mismatched plates and glasses because I don't want this to be too stuffy and formal. I want it to be a fun moment when my family comes over to have tea with me later. Time to press my coffee down and pour myself a cup. And here is my tablescape all done. I have the candles lit, I have the tea out, I have the books out, and I'm just ready for some people to show up so we can have a little party. I absolutely adore this little Mouseman cutting board. It's so cute. To 
purchase items used in this video, you can find them on my website, urbanlegendsantiques.com. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. Give this video a thumbs up and hit the notification bell. I'm Jessie from Urban Legends Antiques and thanks for coming along for the ride. The dresser made it into my booth at 4th Street Antiques in one piece. Whew, it was a beast to move though. When my family gets together, we always like to play board games. So I'm gonna have some board games set out. And just in case anyone wants to add a little bit of whiskey to their teacup, I have that as well. Thanks again, you guys. Bye.